This is a video about controlling your virus synth from software. For years and years, almost everybody that has a virus uses virus control, which is software made by Access in Germany. Um, virus control gave you the ability to do programming on screen in your DAW. Um, it allows you to use your piece of hardware, um, your virus synthesizer as basically a sound module that could control up to 16 different parts at a time. Um, it did patch management, automation, all of that kind of stuff. Sadly, uh, as of just a couple of years ago, uh, Access has decided not to continue to upgrade their software to make it work on the new Macs, the 64-bit Macs. So if you're a Mac user, you now have lost the ability to use your uh, virus control software. A company out of Finland called Mystery Islands Music uh, is now making something it's called Virus HC. So this company makes this software. It basically allows you to access all the programming features uh, that you previously could do using the control software, using their software. You can interface it with your hardware, um, allowing you to do patch librarian stuff, get sounds in and out of your virus. It allows you to use your DAW to control your virus synthesizer, um, accessing all those 16 different parts that you can have happening on different MIDI channels all the time. Uh, it allows you to do on-screen programming, which is quite fast and simple, um, and patch library and stuff. One of the things I found out the hard way is you can't just use a USB cable like you can with some editing software. You have to use a dedicated MIDI control cable. So uh, this is MIDI Dinjax, and uh, this device is made by Roland. Um, so you have to have one of these if you want to be able to use this software. Originally it was quite expensive, but now they've reduced the price to about $40 US. They include two free sound banks um, and all the factory presets from uh, Virus. And there's a free demo version. It has some limitations, but you can check their website and find out all that kind of stuff. So let's take a look at what you can do with this software. So this is the Mystery Islands Music Editor uh, for all the virus products. Uh, so it works as a, li a patch librarian, uh, as well as if we go back here to the multi-mode, these are the 16 parts. You have know, 16 different parts happening at one time off your hardware on uh, different MIDI channels. Then you go to the editing sections and you can see all the parameters that are available on the hardware are here in the editor. Uh, you can access anything from here. Um, a lot of these things, if we go to the effects section, for instance, in the effects section, a lot of knobs here are not available at one time on the hardware. You actually have to call up one page and then another to see these things. So this gives you the ability to actually see all of the, the uh, effect settings, uh, or most of them at one time. And then here is page two of the effects. Uh, the final thing is the arpeggiator section. The uh, more important thing here is where it says model here. And when I go here, you've got the A range, B range, C range, um, the snow. Um, and this is important because for instance, let's go to the effects section. Okay, so here's all the effects that are available on page one uh, for the TI range. But when I go to A range, you'll see a bunch of these are grayed out. And that's because these are all effects that were not available on the earlier synthesizers. So basically what will happen is with this editor, the um, graphic interface will represent which piece of hardware that uh, you wanna emulate or that you're working with. So um, one of the things you'll notice when looking through here, um, the skin that I have on this, the way that it presents graphically, I have as snow. I can change this to uh, any of the other uh, virus synthesizers so it looks like the hardware that you're used to for instance if I go to uh, want, I want to make this look like an indigo uh, in order to actually see that new skin you can see here it says reload project and I have to go here uh, I have to kind of upload something else and then go and reload I'm gonna go down here and when I reload the plugin it will now look like the uh, the other skin that I had asked to see. The other thing you're gonna see here is I've got the hardware here. When I grab a knob and tweak it, you'll see it moves on the software so that you can actually see what parameter you're moving and affecting so that uh, they do actually work um, really nicely integrated together. So take a look at the editor here. Uh, this is the patch librarian. 
if you click here, you can load patches from your hard drive. If I right click here, I can load patches from my synthesizer, from the hardware. These are the ROM patches, these are the RAM patches. Whenever you have a patch here, if you double click on it, you can see here it comes up, which means that it is now active and editable. So you go here and in the editing pane here, um, this is the oscillator and um, filter and envelope section. So the knobs here are dependent upon what you have selected. So as you can see, as I choose a different type of oscillator, so here I go to wavetable. Now my drop down here, there are 99 different waves to choose from. Uh, if I go to the modulation matrix, so the source, and I have a choice here, 38 modulation sources. Then the destination, and there are three per slot. The destination sources, there are 120. So right there, you can see the benefit of having a software editor. If I was on my hardware, on my um, virus synthesizer, I would only be able to see one name at a time as I scroll through the window. So it's really nice to be able to see all these things laid out. The other thing you'll notice here are the locks. See, there's a little lock on every different section, modulation section, LFO, oscillators. You can lock these things, and then once you've got certain things locked, you can either unlock them with a click, or you can go randomize here, and it will randomize all the other parameters um, on that patch, but not the ones that are locked. You can also go over here and release all locks. So that's a pretty neat function there with the modulation matrix. For instance, you have your uh, source and then your destinations, which of which you can have three. Um, but the other thing to keep in mind with these three, you can have them to negative or positive value. So you can modulate quite extremely, even within one slot. Then you do have six slots. Um, the other thing that you can do is modulate slots with the output of other slots. So the modulation capabilities are quite comprehensive here and it's so much nicer to be able to see them all at one time as opposed to um, on the virus hardware in which case um, you have one slot at a time and you're reading it all through a window here we go to the uh, envelope page you've got your filter envelope uh, and you've also got envelopes three and four which you don't have physical representations of on the hardware so it's really handy to have those right there one of the great things about this is that you can use both the software and the hardware at the same time to do your editing. The fact that you can use the knobs on the hardware or the mouse is really valuable, especially when you're doing automation and you're uh, recording a track. You can actually grab your hardware and tweak things and, uh, and it'll all get automated and remembered, but then you can go back and tweak it with the software if you like. These are the soft knobs. You can select what you want to control from each of the three soft knobs and you can program that for each patch and it's so nice to be able to look through them and see them here as opposed to on the hardware where you can only actually look at one name at a time as you scroll through the arpeggiator you have to use software to set up as far as i'm aware there are 64 patterns available but also a user one and the user patterns are defined per patch so every patch that you have on your hardware can have its own user arpeggiator the main thing I've been hearing about this is a lot of people have had a hard time getting it working. And uh, in my experience, you just have to go through and follow to the letter um, all their specifications, requirements, and uh, settings um, uh, that you have to set up on your hardware to make sure that it responds. Something I'd really like to see implemented in the future is the ability to copy and paste. So that, for instance, if you are working on a modulation matrix and you've got a bunch of stuff dialed, you could copy and paste those from one preset to another instead of starting from scratch. Same thing with your effects, all of that sort of stuff. It'd be nice to be able to just take things, move them around from one patch to another. And as of yet, you're not able to do that. Thanks a lot for watching and enjoy your virus.